Hello everyone, welcome to GP Louisville. It's the penultimate round of Swiss and we have a real tough, tense matchup between John Stern and Chris Anderson. Chris Anderson on the right of your screen, John Stern on the left. And Jake, what are we going to look at here with both players at 11 and 2 trying to kick the door down to a possible Grand Prix Top 8? Sounds like Jake isn't talking, but so, now he is. Yes, so Chris Anderson is playing Mono Black Devotion while John Stern is playing a Gruel mid-range deck. Uh, we watched John Stern play this matchup earlier today, and he was able to run over his Mono Black opponent. The best route to victory against this Mono Black deck is to just apply as much pressure as early as possible. Mm -hmm. If you allow them to um, just continue playing their lands, if you let them get to five mana, their spells are more powerful than yours. They're going to be draining you for life, they're going to be drawing more cards than you, and they have a ton of spot removal. So this game does not look good for John Stern at this point. If he has three lands in play and has no permanence on the battlefield, then the mono black deck is going to just run him over. Yeah, because we've got Night Vale Spectre on three. That uh, stole away a Boon Sator, though he's not going to be playing that because uh, the colors don't align. And Erebos, God of the Dead, is next. Boon Sator, end of turn uh, from Stern. 4-2, chance to bestow, but it has flash, so it's just a 4-2 haste man, functionally, if you like, uh, for 3 mana. So he does have a permanent on, on the board after 3 turns, just about. Uh, and he looks at 6 cards in hand. Uh, you see plenty of removal on the right-hand side of your screen in the mono black deck. Um, not a ton of creatures, it's got 4 Desecration Demon, 4 Grey Merchant, 4 Night Veil, vale, a couple of Pack Rats, and a single Erebos, that's the only god you're going to see uh, on the right hand side, and then all of the removals, um, yes. with uh, Devour Flesh, Doom Blade, Ultimate Price, uh, and full 4 of Heroes Downfall, lots of card draw with Underground Connections, some Discard, Thoughtseize, and one of the, the real key pieces of winning the longer game, which is uh, Whip of Erebos. Yes, Whip of Erebos is an incredible tool to have when you're playing a card like Grey Merchant's Fidel. Also quite good with something like Night Vale Spectre, uh, if you have a cheap card. So here's the World Eater. It's Polychronos, 5-5, five, five, gets a chance to uh, Monstrosity later, uh, and the Boon Sator will attack for four. Anderson, uh, looking at well, telegraphing a thought sees by uh, turning one swamp sideways and then untapping it. Um, and uh, the Night Vale Spectre attacks, takes away a mountain, um, which he has the opportunity to play. So maybe one day he will be able to cast uh, some of the cards that he's getting with Night Vale Spectre. Here is the thought sees, and you're going to see two Storm Breath Dragon, in fact, three, three. Trips Dragon, um, and uh, then Xenagos the Reveler plus a mountain. And now, this has to be a scary hand for Chris to see. Un uh, unfortunately for John, Chris does have a lot of removal. But, I mean, he's already under a lot of pressure because of the Pelucranos. Him tapping out for Erebos, God of the Dead, instead of leaving mana untapped to keep removal up, seems to have been a pivotal mistake here in this game because John was able to take advantage of that, put two creatures onto the battlefield while Chris was tapped out without the ability to play removal, and now he gets to just chain hasty creatures right into the red zone against Chris. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, Chris is going to be hard-pressed to find enough removal to deal with all of these dragons while also holding off something like Pelucranos, World Eater. Sure. And Chris checks his hand again. It really is a rock and a hard place, because if you take out two Storm Breath Dragon and then die to the third, yes. uh, that is really pretty savage. And in fact, he has decided that his best chance is to get rid of one now, using Thoughtseize as functional removal in that sense, and then hope to find answers t to the two remaining dragons. So we go back to John Stern, who, as you can see, is indeed from Canada. He started the round from the United States, but he obviously <laughs> moved uh, during the shuffling. Uh, so very much one of Canada's premier players right now. Uh, and as you mentioned, uh, Jake, Grand Prix Atlantic City champion earlier this year.
Yes, John Stern, uh, the um, pre presumptuate leader of uh, Fast Fast of Fast, I believe, face to face. <laughs> face to face to face games. Yes. <laughs> As Palukunas bites the dust, and so does Boon Sater. Um, but Stormbreath Dragon has successfully attacked Chris Anderson down. He's uh, at 10. The Night Vale Spectre continues to do its work. Let's see what we get this time. It's another mountain, which indeed uh, Anderson uh, is going to leave it to one side. Maybe he's going to put down another swamp. And choices, choices. Probably happy to just play that free card. Sure. Also increases the value of the Spectre, mm -hmm. because if he happens to flip up the fourth dragon... Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey! Look what I just got. He gets to play with it. <laughs> now, with this Devour Flesh and Hero's Downfall in Chris's hand, he's in a pretty good spot. He knows that his opponent has a Xenagos and another Stormbreath Dragon in hand, but regardless of the choice that John Stern makes this turn, Chris is going to be able to handle it reasonably well. Uh-huh. Here we go, Devour Flesh, and away they both go. Yeah, so John Stern going to jump up, gain four life there from the Devour Flesh. Surprisingly relevant in a matchup like this. Oh no, he's not going to gain any life because of Erebos, God of the Dead. <laughs> Players cannot. Yes. Yep. Absolutely cannot gain life. Yes. <laughs> it's one of the key rules that you learn right when you start out at Magic. If, some, if the rules say you can do something, and a card says you can't, you can't. Yes. But this card says I do. It does not matter. You cannot. <laughs> In the world of do and don't, it's don't that matters. That's not a philosophy for life, necessarily. <laughs> swamp comes in hand, and that is a very swamp-heavy hand now uh, for Chris Anderson, who's down to eight but does have an empty board on the other side. And that Night Vale Spectre, yet again, piles in, and this time it's a Mist Cutter Hydra that goes away. Well, he hasn't found a green source yet to be able to cast that. But who knows? Draw for Stern. Xenagos. There it is. New red green planeswalker out of Theros. I really enjoy Xenagos as a planeswalker. Uh -huh. Xenagos the Reveler. It creates a lot of interesting play situations. It's an extremely difficult card to play with. It makes fringe cards like Scar Guild Mage playable in some capacity. Mm -hmm. It's it's one of my absolute favorite cards from the set. So in comes the hasty token with Xenagos staying at three loyalty. Chris just unable to find anything. A hand with five swamps in it. Well, there's a spell. Not exactly um, the type of spell he wants. He was really hoping to just find a black permanent. It would turn on his Erebos. Um, it can mm. hold off the Xenagos. There's but Thoughtseize. But Thoughtseize is an absolute do-nothing at this point because... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. He just dies. That's what happens. Ah, look at that! <laughs> you should never flip the top of your library. Oh, dear. Yes. Oh, Chris Anderson. Mm, that's got to hurt. Yes, I saw a red-green play yesterday against Josh Shutter Layton with triple Nykthos in hand and the fourth one on the battlefield while Josh was doing his Esper Control thing and Planeswalkers are playing. So I thought, yeah, that's not a great feeling. And I mean, when it's, you do it's, that... You, it, it's, it's frustrating to draw all lands like that, but if Chris had just not attacked with his Night Vale Spectre mm -hmm. and passed the turn, he could have blocked a Seder. Yep. And... Oh, ultimate uh, price was, cannot kill the, the Seder token because uh, it's multicolored. He so was, he was, so and he, he was, was down dead. to two. Yeah, so he was he down was to dead. two. So he was dead. Uh, they see the upcoming uh, webcast schedule. Uh, mm -hmm. A real mix 
uh, of formats. So we begin with Modern next week. Looking forward to seeing Matej Zatelkai fresh from his top 16 at the Pro Tour. Congratulations to him. Uh, Theros Limited, uh, Grand Prix Valencia a couple of weeks later. And it's just week after week after week of high-level magic here at magicthegathering.com. Washington for Legacy. It's always great when we get to show Legacy uh, on Daily MTG. Grand Prix Albuquerque for Standard. Uh, and then the back end, last couple of Grand Prix of the year, not of the season, but uh, of the year, Vienna for Standard. And then as we head towards Christmas time, and happy Christmas to you all, let me be the first to say. <laughs> <laughs> Grand Prix Dallas Fort Worth, uh, the 7th and 8th of December. Um, and I'm uh, looking forward More to that. More than two months removed. We're already, be, we're already celebrating. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. It's still October, isn't it? Oof. Yes. It's got a ways to go. Yeah. Must be time to have a look at isitchristmas.com. <laughs> it's one of my favorite websites of all Is time. Is it Christmas? As in I-Z-Z-E-T? No, no. No, no. Just I-S-I-T-C-H-R-I-S-T-A-M-S.com. They're going to get a spike right now because the chat room is going to go <laughs> visit. You watch. You're going to be so thrilled with the production values at that website, let me tell you. <laughs> I generally like to go there somewhere around about May time and then again in July. They're, they're often good months to have a look at isitchristmas.com. It's good fun. <laughs> no advertising on the site, so I'm not uh, promoting another website, rest <laughs> assured. Uh, so we're heading for game two here uh, with John Stern up a game thanks to, ultimately, uh, his Xenagos. And if we go back a few turns, Jake, in that match uh, to where we saw a Thoughtseize revealing three Stormbreath Dragon and a Xenagos... Uh, Chris took away Stormbreath Dragon number three, dealt with Stormbreath Dragon number one and two, but that left the fourth card that he was having to choose between, and it was Xenagos the Reveler that took the game down. And Chris drew a lot of lands there. If he had been able to draw some more action, he might have uh, had some better luck there, but, you know, as, as magic goes sometimes, the top of your library might just have a lot of lands. The answer to my next question cannot be it depends, though I understand that the answer is it depends, all right? Fair so, enough, fair enough. One of the big skills in Magic at a high level is understanding what the words on a card really mean. Not just what they say and what they theoretically mean, but what, what is really going on. So the card I want to ask you about is Hero's Downfall. Okay. That card reads Creature or Planeswalker. Correct. Which means that either of those is a choice all the time, assuming yes. that both are in play or whatever. So that's what the card is and does. But what I want to know is, what does it really say? Is Hero's Downfall, instant speed, destroy target planeswalker, brackets, or if you really must, comma, a creature, close brackets? Is that what it really is in the way that people are using it? Or is it destroy target creature, brackets, oh, I suppose you can hit a planeswalk if you felt like it, close brackets. I think it's, I think it's a, a very uh, encompassing card in the sense that um, a card like Hero's Downfall, when testing for the Pro Tour, I think uh, short of Detention Sphere, um, it's basically just an instant speed Vindicate in this format that can't hit lands. Okay. It's an unbelievable spell. It can hit just about whatever is going on your opponent's side of the table, and here we are in this game. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, d just because we've seen so much information, I just want to make sure people see the Arbor Colossus, Xenagos, the Rolliver, uh, Reveler, Polucronos, and Colonian Tusker as the four spells. As uh, you see Chris Anderson do the correct thing, write them down. Don't memorize them. By all means, memorize them too, but write them down, cross them off um, as your opponent plays them. Yeah, it's definitely the most efficient way to do things. By writing down all of the cards in your opponent's hand when you thought sees them, you don't need to use brain power to try to recall what you've seen. You just have the information right at your fingertips. And there is the Tusker on turn two. Xena goes that one game one will not be winning game two, at least not that copy of it. Uh, as the Tusker comes in and Devour Flesh invites John Stern uh, to send the Tusker away. And Chris Anderson will not care about the three life at all. John Stern, not finding something that absolutely demands a removal spell from his mono black opponent. Ooh, and that's rough. Chris Anderson missing a fourth land drop when his hand is stacked with Desecration Demon and Whip of Erebos. Two very powerful cards in this matchup. 
Uh, if he finds a fourth land here, he'll be in a pretty good spot because he'll be able to untap and cast the demon into an empty board. But he also if he can't find it here, he might be... Yeah, he also can't play Night Vale Spectre right now because it's the old mutable thing again. And he's probably only playing one copy, right? Oh, no, he's playing four. Oh, wow. Okay. A little bit bold, that. I believe that may be quite bold. Yeah. Okay, so Arbor Colossus uh, comes down uh, for John Stern. And boy, oh boy, is he likely to punish uh, that lack of land on the other side of the table. Still got a couple of turns to uh, pull himself out, though, uh, Chris Anderson at the moment. As the very large Reach Man comes in. And it's looking like he'll just play another Arbor Colossus. Uh, what's better than one? Two. Yeah, and I mean, this will force Chris to either... Uh, I mean, now... Even if he draws the land, it's just too yeah, late. Yeah, Desecration Demon. Here, let me show you my hand. Game, set, match, Canada victorious, Stern victorious. And Chris Anderson, now at 11-3, and three, will have to win his last round and hope for the best. And my guess is that the best is top 16. As for John Stern, though, 12-2, and two, uh, he has the opportunity to go... Uh, into the last round and look at the tiebreak shuffle and see whether he feels he can ID into another top eight. And we get to go to another table, and this is kind of cool because we get to see uh, right at the start of what I imagine maybe game two we'll see. Um, this is a little bit further down the standings. This is what I might call we've decided to, we're, we're, you know, we're about to go into the last round of Swiss and then the top eight. Of course, it's all the top decks all the time. But there's a lot of Esper Control out there. There's a lot of Mono Blue Devotion and Mono Black Devotion. I want to show you a couple of other things going on. Uh, and so we've taken you a little further down the standings. Not far, just to 10 and 3. Only one match down the rung uh, to Val Bacalar playing on the right of screen, playing with his white deck. Very, very aggressive indeed. And on the left, fan favorite Adrian Sullivan playing Bug Control. Black, blue and green. Yes, and Adrian's deck is very interesting. It's basically the mono black devotion deck, but he's splashing green for abrupt decay and gaze of granite. And then he has a lot of blue mana in his deck because Temple of Mystery can help him cast his Night Vale Spectre while also producing green mana. And it allows him to sideboard in powerful spells like Negate and Gainsay, which are huge in this format. Currently, lots of lands that are sideways or upside down, depending on how you view the world. Uh, from Adrian Sullivan on the left, you've got Judges Familiar and Soldier of the Pantheon. Um, and this time, by the way, Soldier of the Pantheon is indeed designed to turn sideways, unlike in the Esper Control Mirror we saw last round. <laughs> yes, here is where the Soldier of the Pantheon is acting as a Savannah Lion. <laughs> Temple of Triumph uh, allows Scry for Val Bacalar. Again, we think neither of these players in top eight contention, not least because uh, tie breaks are not great. Um, Adrian Sullivan certainly won his win and in yesterday. As we see, Daring Skyjack really in standard. Interesting. Yes, Daring Such Skyjack a fantastic has been limited card. And oh, yeah. I mean, in Gate Crash Limited, Daring Skyjack was a card you'd be happy to first pick. Mm. But here in uh, standard, it's not a card you'd really expect to see. However, um, in these mono white decks that we've started to see recently it's actually quite good it's a yeah. three power creature for two mana it comes down uh you're usually attacking with three guys you also get to play muta vault which makes it really easy to turn on battalion so you just get a three power flyer for two mana and you can't really get a bitter deal in that no it's fantastic terrific i just love that cards like i love it when cards make the leap from limited champion to a genuine piece of a standard environment or, or a block environment even as we see Banisher Priest for the Grey Merchant of Asphodel that came down last turn from Adrian Sullivan. That gained him uh, a couple of points of life, but only a couple. That's not the optimal number for a Grey Merchant. Uh, and Sullivan, once again, under the gun, he's down to single figures uh, here in game three. He lays land number six. And interestingly enough, that Banisher Priest exiling the Grey Merchant of Asphodel mm -hmm. will allow Adrian to reuse... Great Merchant of Asphodel's coming to play ability sure. if he has the opportunity to kill that Banisher Priest. Pretty risky play there on Val's part, but Val must assume that... Ooh, wow. That's a Progenitor Mimic. mimic this is out a of the six board. mana mm -hmm. clone, and at the be it gains an ability where at the beginning of your upkeep, you put a copy of the creature that you copied 
into play. So now he's getting, going to copy this Banisher Priest. Yep. Uh, or attempt to, rather. Sure. And um, it doesn't, and it, the Banisher Priest uh, trigger does not work because of Brave the Elements from Val here. Wow. So the other BTE in standard. Yes. After burning tree emissary, brave the elements. Brave the elements has made an impact in multiple formats over the years. Paul Ritzel won a Pro Tour in 2010 at Pro Tour Amsterdam uh, with yes. th uh, I think the full four. That was Kai's comeback. Boros Charm is the win for Val Bacalar. He got there. Brave the elements was all he needed. In the end, the Grey Merchant was uh, not sufficient. We got a cool moment there where we got to talk about Progenitor Mimic, which wasn't something I was expecting. Uh, but that puts Val Bacalar to 11-3. Uh, 